world. Welcome to the Reef Beef Podcast. My name is Rich. And I am Ben. And this is the Reef Beef Podcast. Tonight, we're going to talk about plastics in the ocean and in our tanks. And we also have a guest, Felicia McCauley, who's going to talk about women's issues in reef keeping and also keeping seahorses. And we're also going to talk about shenanigans involving setting up tanks with burritos. And the show <laughs> tonight is brought to you by saltwateraquarium.com, but more on that later. And uh, Hey, Richard, you know what would help us out? What, Ben? What would help it's us out? People, people liking and subscribing on YouTube, comments, share it with your friends, share it with your enemies. Yeah. Because you know, if, if, you, if you hate the show and you don't like someone, send them a link. Yeah. And, and, and they just ben, came and said, the best thing you could do is uh, share the link to other groups to get us exposure yeah. if you like the show. And if you don't like the show, why should you be the only one suffering? Yeah. And, uh, um, and uh, remember to always tag everything with Reef Beef Sucks because that'll get yeah. us and, um And put stuff in the comments. We read the comments now. But uh, yeah. sharing this around is the best way to help support the show. We also have a Patreon. Uh, not a Patreon. Not a Patreon. They suck. The you can buy us a coffee. Or a beer. Buy us a beer. Yeah. Yeah. The links Buy are me all a beer. Below. All these. Yeah. Look for the link us. below. So uh, we really appreciate you guys supporting us. It makes it uh, a lot easier to do the show and get lights and keep Ben in hats and backgrounds. Yep. I'm running out. I need more. Felicia, welcome to the show. Is there a. Hi, Felicia. A, I, I've known you for a million years. I met you at a Magna and we took pictures of tattoos. Uh, and that was, oh, really I fun. remember that. That was the first time I met you. And then we've been friends since, um, what are you, what are you up to now? Um, well, right now I'm working for Marine Depot and nice. I love them. and I'm never going to leave. Uh, I, I took a little break from Coral Magazine, but I was writing for them for a really long time too. And they're just lovely people like, uh, James, Judy, Matt. I love them. They always treat me gold. So other than that, just taking care of my kids this year, uh, we had to do cyber school, which requires me to be a teacher for like five hours a day. So I've had absolute zero free time for anything, but um, I'm hoping this summer that I'll have more time to start writing again and doing fish stuff again. I have like five minutes a day to spend on my tanks. I'm like, ah, okay. <laughs> My sump is, is so low that my pump is running dry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the worst fish keeper this year. I just have no time. Yeah, I can understand that though. You know, but that's, you know, I think that's one of the cool things about being an experienced hobbyist is you know how far you can push that line of-, of I know exactly of how far I can go before things crash. And it's- Yeah, the same with yeah. kids, right? Like I know Ben's kids are <laughs> killing each other in the other room and he's like, whatever. I, I don't I don't take an active hand in raising mine. The gypsies come in the neighborhood sometimes and they, you know, they take control, but they sleep in the trees. The, the kids do? Yes, not, not the gypsies. No, they have bungalows. I wouldn't let gypsies sleep in my tree. <laughs> you saw a show about plastics and then you wanted to talk about plastics. Yeah, but... I didn't want to like use it as a, a like a like a reference because it's one of those what do you call it like news slash comedy shows that John not John Stewart what's the Oliver. guy the British dude Oliver John Oliver are, are we but, are we doing the show or are we talking about doing the show hey we could just whatever you know how we do it okay good because I thought we were doing the show so let's we see. kind of are right okay good good I hope this stays in Jesus so, Christ. So we're talking about that you saw it on John Oliver, but that's not what you wanted to talk about? Well, no, no. I'm not saying it's not what I wanted to talk about. I just didn't want to like pose it like, I saw this thing on John Oliver. And it's, I don't know, it is kind of funny because he does bring credible news things onto there and then they just make light of it. Yeah. But, so but he was, he, they were talking about the plastics. I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit, I am though. I'm like a, a habitual like recycler. And I get frustrated because I always read these articles that talk about how like most of the stuff that I recycle really isn't getting recycled. But so anyways, I mean, a lot of it ends up in the ocean and that giant mass that's floating around the ocean. And then even it gets abraded into like micro particles and the fish eat it. We eat the fish. We have micro particles. You can actually now measure the like plastics in our body if you eat a lot of seafood. And it's just, 
but it i mean it, to to bring it back to our industry i'm just always like impatient yeah good i'm just always <laughs> shut up <the, laughs> I'm just impatient for the world to be trying other sorts of packaging. I'm just bitching with no solution. I don't know what the solution is, but yeah. I just wish that, I mean, there's so many things in our own industry, DI beads and plastic bottles and plastic fish bags. And our industry is filled to the gills with plastic for real. Yeah. And I, you know, Again, like I said, I'm kind of bitching without the solution, but I just wonder if our industry, since we are kind of keeping care of animals and in that regard, could we not be a little proactive and trying to figure something else out? Yeah. You, you know what else that made me think of? Because he, he, John Oliver did the segment and he talked about how we've been sold this idea by the companies that make the products with the plastic. Oh that it's our fault yeah, yeah, yeah. that the plastics don't get recycled, even though they only recycle, can only recycle like 10% of the plastics anyway. And that made me feel like that's the same thing that the, that the industry and trade seems to do with sustainability in the hobby. It's like, it's up to- Like it's our fault. Yeah, yeah, it's up to the end user to make wise choices and we should educate. And, and I've been saying for a while, not just me, but other people, but I know I've been yelling about it a little bit that, I think it's the other way around. I think the sustainability all comes from, should all come from the trade and the industry because that's where the difference can be made. And, um, you know, to blame, to make hobbyists, to, to assume that hobbyists should get educated about sustainability when all they want to do is buy some corals and some fish and have a nice time at home, to make them responsible for all their buying choices and to leave the industry and the trade out of it seems backwards to me. It, you know, why make it a problem for anyone? Why doesn't the trade and industry just be sustainable? And then our whole thing is shiny and sustainable and we all win. And every time any anti-trade people come up, we can go, yeah, but look, we're awesome. But, yeah. But, but they've done the but, same thing. They flipped it around. Every time it comes up, it's, it's educate the consumer, educate the consumer. And it's like, there's no other choice. But and also consumers come up as a new crop, like new hobbyists, like all the time. Every day, people are walking into stores saying, I want to keep saltwater aquarium. I mean, it's every day there's new hobbyists. Some people leave, some people come in, you know. And so it's like, what do you constantly? Especially this year. What's Especially that? this year. Really yeah. Good point. This year, it yeah. was, it blew up. People were like, all right, I'm going to be at home. I'm going to set up a tank. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah, and I, I, as a business too, like I even got some people that probably bought some extra stuff with some of their extra money yeah. too. Um, I've, seen, I've that, seen sales for that. Stimulus check sales. Yeah. Yeah. How much is this aquarium going to cost me? $1,400 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what stimulus checks are supposed to do is go back right into the economy and get stuff happening, so. I guess that's yeah, and it's like a fight for the stimulus dollars. Um, um, oh my lord. <laughs> um, um, oh my lord. <laughs> this week's show is brought to you by saltwateraquarium.com. And at saltwateraquarium.com, no matter what you buy, is free shipping. No minimum purchase required. No uh Minimum purchase required. Again, you could do it twice. No minimum <laughs> purchase two required. Times. Two no minimum purchases, uh, and it's free shipping, which is incredible. A lot of other places do charge some a minimum of like thirty nine bucks or something like that. Yeah, and you can pay however you want with Apple Pay, Amazon Pay, Google Pay, uh, PayPal, or a credit card. And there's all kinds of. They even have a. Free. Yeah, they even have a five uh, five percent frequent buyers discount club. The more yeah. you buy, the. Get the, get the percentage off. And if you're a veteran or military and civil service person, you get a discount. You also get a discount to healthcare workers. The link is down in the bottom. We think it's very cool that they've added healthcare workers onto that. Yeah. Like if you're wearing scrubs and you're dressed like Rambo and you have a gun, like that's just a lot of percentages off right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And they also have uh, saltwater related content. They have an insiders group on Facebook uh, where you get special a lot of deals. articles special content, some beta testing stuff to help with your tank. So check out the link below. They're very cool to help us out. And their shop, their, their online store has got 
kind of everything you could possibly need at really good prices. So uh, yep. saltwaterenduragrim.com. We like them a lot. We use them. Uh, we wouldn't advertise somebody we didn't think was good just for their nope. money. We like them. They're nice people. So go check them out. Saltwateraquarium.com. Um, um, oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Felicia, since you're here uh, and, and we're done with the plastics beef, I know that you saw our show where we talked about Boobgate. Um, <laughs> and, yeah. and, 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 since, and since Ben and I are white men uh, and really, in a mm -hmm. sense, have almost no business talking about the plight of women, except as allies, because most people don't talk about what happens to women. Did you had uh, you you said you had a couple stories about that you wanted to share or talk about? Lay it on. Yeah, when I was sister. watching your show, I thought of a few things like that just stuck out in my mind that a lot of people don't think about uh, maybe what it's like to be a woman in a hobby slash industry that is almost entirely, at least. It used to be almost entirely made of men. Um, I used to be pretty rare. Uh, so one of my first experiences with outright unabashed sexism was uh, when I started at Live Aquaria. This would have been like 2006. I was on the phones in the call center and um, I, answered the, I answered the call. Thank you for calling Live Aquaria. This is Felicia. How can I help you? And the guy lets out an audible sigh <sighs> like I could just see his face through the phone and he said and I quote is there a guy there I can talk to Ew. and I was just kind of shocked for a second like I didn't know what to say and it was the weirdest thing that ever happened to me like I'd never really experienced anything like it before but I was pretty young um so my the guy in the cubicle across from me his name was Adam and uh, so I hopped over and I said, hey, are you on a call? Can you take this call for me? So he was like, okay, what's up? Like, why? Because he was the one who was always asking me for help, you know, because I, at that point was, you know, pretty knowledgeable for what we were doing. So he takes the call and the guy is asking him some like pretty detailed questions and I can hear him in the other cubicle going like, uh, and I heard him say, and I quote, uh, Felicia is kind of the expert on that. Let me just ask her real quick. Let me put you on hold. So he yes. puts the guy on hold. And asked me the question, and it was I pretty, put I him on what it was about. Yeah. I was like chemistry or something. Yeah. So this went on for like 15 minutes where, and then at that point I had taken another call because my phone rang. So I had to keep trying to answer this guy's questions while I was on another call with someone else. And it was just ridiculous that this guy wouldn't talk to me. Like he wanted to talk to the man, even though I was he answering the question. Just hearing hearing my words coming out of the mouth of a man somehow made him feel better about following my advice. And I just thought that was weird. And we all laughed about it and we all talked about it that day, but that was wow. just wild to me. Wow. I um I think that's fucked up. And I I'd like to talk to that guy if he if he's listening, fucking yeah. call me because if you're still doing that shit, you're a <laughs> jackass. Well, he's going to watch this and he's like, what the hell? That was me. I'm so sorry, Felicia. Off the, I didn't mean it. Out of the gate. I mean, you know. That was 2006. Oh, so 2006. maybe. Maybe is he's he still a reefer. Maybe he's dead. Yeah, maybe he <laughs> licked a wall socket and he died. Let's hope. Did you advise him to lick a wall socket? I'm so angry about stuff like this and I'm so sorry it happens. And I'm so sorry. I was amused more than anything, yeah. but it I'm, I'm ultimately glad. it just created more work for me. That's right. what annoyed me the most is, you know, I had to do twice the thinking. I was doing his phone call and some other phone call at the same time. So ultimately it just, you know, a lot of men don't realize this, but not all of you, not all of you, but some of you tend to create more work for us. <laughs> And the ladies watching are probably going, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the more, the more I listen to, to, to women say things like that, the more I'm chagrined about what I'm sure I've done in the past. Um, because that's just the stupid culture. And that's what bothers me so much. You know, I, you know, it's, since we're, I mean, since this is public and we're not truly sitting around in a, a bar or alley, like bullshitting, 
but it's like i'm not trying to pander to anyone i'm to like it's just weird like i don't know i don't know if any point in my life that i ever i don't understand that mindset of let me talk to a guy um i guess i was pretty close to my mother growing up my mom you know raised us my dad was traveling a lot so i just I, I never, it never occurred to me that like a woman couldn't know stuff. I would just talk to someone and if they're making sense, I will listen. That's all. Exactly. That happened a lot, um, like at local shops too. It wasn't obvious. Like they weren't, they didn't go out of their way to say like, oh, I'm not going to listen to a woman, but I had to earn their trust first. I had to, you know, I had to prove that I knew what I was talking about before people would, you know, trust me. Otherwise, they would just zoom past me, even if I wasn't, you know, busy, and they would wait in line for the guy coworker. But uh, I have to say, you know, my my male coworkers have always been pretty, uh, you know, like, hey, you know, Felicia, let's ask her because she really knows what she's talking about. You yeah, know? Felicia knows her shit. Have That's you gotten that thing though where someone was like, would like, oh, I have a plumbing question though. Is there someone here that knows about plumbing? It's like, well, I'm standing right the fuck in front of you. Ask me. Exactly. If I know. They kind of like veil the questions a little bit, like, you know, like, are you sure you know about this? Because you're a girl. But yeah, because yeah. girls don't know plumbing. And they get away with it because they feel like they're they're asking the question, but they never ask that of the men. I, you know, I worked in stores since mm -hmm. I was, you know, since 84, 83 or something like that. And, um, you know, but I'm a confident jackass as well. But, but no one ever said, do you really know what you're doing? You know, even when I didn't know what I was doing, you know, and then I would like say, oh, we're doing this. And then they'd go away when we have to drill their tank. I'm like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. How do I do this? And someone would teach. Me. I've had people ask me that all the time. Do you know what you're do doing? Do you know what the fuck you're doing? Yeah. And I'm like, well, I just read the manual, so this is practice, right? <laughs> do you get do you get any weirdness like that at the shows, like at the the, the trade shows? Actually, no. But oh, that's when good. I go to a trade show, like I know everybody, so there's nobody there that's gonna be like, hmm, side eye me because you know I know you guys, I know you all. Yeah, yeah. That's where I go. Yeah, yeah. That's what I go for. Okay, that's good. What about, are you a member of any, like, reefing clubs? Um, probably, all of them. Probably. probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because, well, what I was getting at is because I've heard from other female reefers, like, that sometimes they don't like to attend those because it's just like a hot dog festival. Oh, yeah. Less so in the freshwater. Yeah, um, there really? are a lot of women in the freshwater clubs, which is really cool and fun. Um, yeah, like the uh, Bucks County. You guys are fun. I love you guys. Ah, nice. How does so the, how does the hot dog fest? What what happens that makes you go? Because when Ben said that, you went yeah. What what actually happens um, to make you make that face? Um, because I think <laughs> I think we don't really know it. Is it subtle or is it is it just, you know, mm, oh man, I, my tank is so big. My fish is so <laughs> awesome. Is it that kind of stuff? Or is it, hey, baby? You know, just the, the boys club kind of stuff, you know. Um, I've, I've kind of felt excluded sometimes just for not being, you know, one of the good boys. But a lot of you guys have made me feel definitely included and i appreciate you and you know who you are also <laughs> in addition to these two boys here on the screen <laughs> I, and i i know with the with the thank you um i know with the women in reefing i i know i know that uh, um from time to time women talk to me about how to be a speaker or how to write articles and i usually say talk to felicia if if you want it from a woman's perspective because i'm not a woman um, and then Probably I, not. and then I, and then I usually also say something like, you know, it, it's, it's, it might be easier if you're a man, but it's not easy. You know, um, you know, I, I just blared ahead for two years before I got my first anything, um, you know, tr tried and tried and no one, no one cared at all until I got a break, 
And then I was like on it and worked and worked and worked and worked. And I think, I think there is some uh, idea that, that it's, that you're just in, you know, it's a, it is easier if you're a man, but it's also not easy. So, um, and then I, I have other, you know, I say, talk to you, talk to Kathy, talk to Christine, you know, uh, talk to any of any women who, who you know the name of and find out what's going on with them and, and what they suggest. Um, and I'll do whatever I can to, to push you forward. At the same time, you got to have something to say, you know, you, you know, Sometimes I find people, both men and women, going, go, well, you just get to speak. It's like, well, what do you have to speak about? And I go, uh, nothing. It's like, well, then, then no one's going to ask you to speak. You have to have something to say. Uh, any, any, other, any other stories from an actual woman? <laughs> and then we'll talk about um, one, one really scary story. Um, so Ooh. I was working at a fish shop, and... Um, there was a fellow that always came in there and he was, you know, tall, handsome, good looking. He had a really nice car. He always spent a lot of money. And I get the impression that he was the kind of guy who just kind of always got what he wanted. And um, back then I was cuter, younger, and he was always asking me to go out with him, always asking me to go on a date with him. He's like, I'll buy you diamonds. And I was like, oh, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm all right. Thanks so. though. And I was always polite to him and, you know, you know, he'd always make me bag his fish, even if there were other people available, you know, stuff like that. And um, one day I was working there alone and the way our store was built, um, the, the fish room was in the very, very back. The saltwater room was in the very back and there was like a long hallway kind of that led to the front. So I was in the very back by myself and the boss was up front running the cash register like really super far away. And uh, so this guy comes in, of course, and I'm by myself and he's bugging me, you know, like, hey, go on a date with me, go on a date with me. And I was just like, ah, you know, yeah. I don't really want to talk about this right now. Like, do you need help? Like, can I get you some corals some fish, whatever? And all I remember is at one point he grabbed my wrists with his hands and started to pull me. And there's a door, uh, leading to the alley behind the store and he was pulling me it seemed like toward that door and it just happened so fast I couldn't even say anything I couldn't even like scream or make noise or anything I was just you know terrified like my life was flashing before my eyes and like really quickly I thought like oh my god is this gonna guy gonna like kill me and I'm so lucky at that moment my coworker Jimmy I love you man um <laughs> this guy before he worked with us, he was like a, a refrigerator and appliance delivery guy. So he's huge, you know, Jimmy's this really big guy. And he came walking down the, the narrow hallway and saw that this guy had his hands on me and he flipped out on the guy and was like, all right, you know, you need to leave. And he kicked him out. And um, so we told the owner, we told the boss what happened. And I even had Jimmy there to say, I saw what happened. I saw him put his hands on her. And the boss was like, well, and I said, can we like ban him from the store? Because he really makes me nervous. Um, and the boss was like, well, he spends a lot of money here. So maybe oh, you can. God. So every time this guy came in after that, I would go hide in the laundry room and lock the door. Cause we had a, a little oh, like yeah. closet with that. So I'd like sit on a five gallon bucket and lock the door while he was in the store. And Jesus um, fucking Christ. That's not what made him put alarms on the back door either. We didn't have alarms on the back door at that point. It took getting somebody's tablet stolen. It was like one of those little. Well, the tablets then are we put an alarm on the back door. Tablets are hard to replace. Yeah. So that so was innocence, Richard. So fuck. So anybody who's listening who thinks, you know, we should shut up about this kind of stuff. No, I can't. You know, the idea of Felicia hiding from this jackass customer in the back room on a bucket Whoa. waiting for him to go. That's just like makes me very unhappy yeah but in in her and and that's one thing but her boss not like getting her back that's gross yeah. too the whole thing's gross i'm so sorry i don't want to say where it was or anything but you know he's a good guy you know i i i still talk to him i you know i 
He oh, he sounds well, great. Right? He sounds like a really fucking stand-up piece of shit. I think it's just that's just the culture. That's how it is. <laughs> right. Just, right. And that's and, just what people are used to. And I'm, I'm I don't talking, agree with that. It it is, and I'm I agree with Ben not agreeing. I'm tired <laughs> of it. I'm tired of it in the larger world, and I'm fucking way more tired of it in the aquarium world, especially in the saltwater world. Just fucking guys, mm. fucking stop it. Yeah. Your dick is not but, a gift. No one likes you. Stop it. We like you because you talk about the animals in our tanks. Stop it. Yeah, I do wish that I wish I had I wish I had more of you your sort of experience like you guys. I just that's what I want to do. I want to talk about fish. I like fish. I like coral. You know, I like aquariums. That's what I want. I don't want to worry about Hey, will you go on a date with me? Or um, something I experienced when I was pregnant with my first kid is um, because, you know, the change happened so rapidly, it was really obvious, you know, when I was, you know, younger and cuter and thinner, I'd have guys like, hey, let me carry that for you. Hey, can I carry that for you? Just constantly. And I'd be like, no, I'm fine. I got it. You know, I do this all day long. I pick up heavy buckets. But when I was pregnant, I actually had customers like grown men that had, you know, looked like they hit the gym, they would ask me to carry their buckets of water or salt to their car. Jesus. I would be like, uh, hey, hey, uh, I can't do that right now. <laughs> oh it was You're getting it from both ends. In a bad way. Yeah. That is, yeah. I'm, thank you. Thank you for coming on with those two stories, especially because they are so opposite. Um, and it, I think it really points out how pervasive it is in stupidly different ways. You, you, you know, you can't win. Either, either you're attractive and everyone's all over you or, or you're pregnant and still fucking attractive and people think yeah, are not interested in you. It's- I became invisible and it was weird to me. Like it yeah. was, I was almost like depressed about, uh, just, you know, the change in how people treated me when I was pregnant and gained weight. Ugh. So. Yeah, when I gained weight, I wasn't pregnant because that's impossible at this <laughs> point. But when I gave weight, no one really gave me any shit about it at all. No one mentioned it. And then when I was losing huh. weight and people were like, are you sick? And I would go, well, you didn't give a fuck about me when I was fat and dying. Uh, and now that oh, I'm that's losing crazy. weight, you're like, are you... Are you okay? It's like, what is what is wrong with us? I lost Dude. a whole bunch of weight in like 2010 and I was literally sick. Like I couldn't eat food. I was on a liquid diet. Oh, and no. even going to the doctor, they would be like, hey, great job on your weight loss. And I'd be like, but I'm really sick and I can't eat food. We're having like the opposite experience here. <laughs> oh my God. This is that's something I complain about sometimes. Okay. Well. I th anyway, I think we thank you for that. And, and we want to do the other part of what we do on the show is talk about stuff that you know about that other people or us may not know about. The prevailing wisdom that I hear about keeping seahorses, and this is in public aquariums and in other places, um, is that, you know, people want the tank to be as sterile as possible because they're terrified of infection. And then they run into problems. And any, any animal I've actually ever done that with has done worse for me. I've never, I've never done really well with keeping everything super clean. And, and it seems to me that the people who keep the tanks super clean often have the same problems with their seahorses um, that they're trying to say that they don't have um, if the tank is cleaner. So does that make sense what I just said? Yes. Be are they do they have a do they have a weak immune system are they more um so seahorses <laughs> evolved to eat live food they mm -hmm. didn't evolve to eat the dead food that we feed to them you know like frozen mice or shrimp that's dead and as soon as you put it in the tank it starts collecting bacteria you know it's gross seahorses they don't have the gut associated lymphoid tissue uh, where most of the immune system is generally, I, am I saying this even right, Rich? But you know, yeah, you no, know I mean. I'm sitting here smiling, going, "Yeah, remember before when we said uh, Felicia knows her shit? Felicia knows her shit." Yeah, 
She said lymphovibrosis. Yes. Okay. Ben. So most animals, most animals like us, I think, and like groupers that eat dead food, we have to have gut associated lymphoid tissue to uh, be able to process that stuff to protect us from the bacteria that naturally collects on dead stuff. Well, seahorses, they never needed to evolve that. They don't have to have that. So when we try to keep them in captivity and we're feeding them this dead food, um, especially when it gets mixed in with the feces and the old rotted food that's already in the tank that people don't clean up ever, um, that's when you really run into problems um, with Vibrio, Myco specifically, um, is collecting on that dead food. As soon as it hits the floor, bam. And, and you know, they're eating it. And... Right. So you could minimize that. People make those feeding stations and you know they're not taking them out every time to clean them. So mm -hmm. the dead food goes in there, bacteria grows, and then they put, then you put a squirt of mysis in there and uh, fro you know, thawed frozen, and then it's, it's rolling around in that goo. That is such a great insight because the, all the ones I've kept you know, or worked with, the, 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 the Barjabanti and the Zostre, they all got live food. Um, yeah. Also, I live by the coast, so I can just collect some kind of foods for them also as well. So that makes a lot of sense. So I will never recommend somebody try to train their seahorses on the frozen again. Huh. Oh, but that, no, it's okay. It's all never. right, because that's it's all done. we have. That's, you know, that's what we have. You guys out there in California, you go with your nets and collect your stuff, but you know, we're landlocked, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. Okay. So we have right. to feed them frozen, but there are ways around it. Um, Give. It only takes, okay. I, I say this to people and I'm like, you really should be doing this with your quarantine tanks too, people. Before I and so <laughs> I love quarantine. Ah, can we just all please quarantine our fish? Anyway, so it's the same thing with feeding seahorses as with your quarantine tank. I always tell people this. It only takes like five minutes just to have a hose and a bucket next to your tank, before you feed, siphon out the crap, feed your fish. Oh, okay. An hour later, siphon it again. It only takes a minute. But is that with, is that with keeping like, like a glass bottom system? If it's a quarantine, yeah, it'll be glass bottom. Um, if it's a Oh, you were talking about in quarantine. Thing. Well, in quarantine or a seahorse tank. If you have a seahorse tank and you believe me, if you have a seahorse, you're going to see the crap, <laughs> right? Rich people yeah. who have seahorses, they know what I'm talking about. You're going to see it siphon that crap out before you feed them. Just keep it clean. Uh, scrub your walls. Um, Especially in quarantine. If you know it's yeah. a problem, you know, it's an issue. Um, you know, you know, people, <laughs> People have this idea that they should leave food in the tank all day uh, and hopefully the animals mm -hmm. will come pick at it. That's probably not going to happen with seahorses. But more importantly, exactly what Felicia's saying, that food's going to start to break down. And if you're doing a quarantine tank, you don't want that turning into ammonia in your tank. And yeah. that's mm -hmm. what happens. You can't leave it in there all day. You could leave it there for half an hour. You know, you know sometimes when I fish in quarantine, I put the food in. And I come way back to the side of the room like this, and I stand here for half an hour and I watch them. And if they eat, then I pull it out. And if it's been a half hour, it all comes out. But don't leave it. It just turns into ammonia. And that's the, in my opinion, the biggest problem with quarantine tanks is ammonia, not anything else. From yeah, I had, a, I had a client that was keeping a container where he was thawing out frozen food. And he would have it up to a week in his fridge and would divvy it out. And I was like, dude, what are you doing? Like, even though it's the fridge, it's still getting rancid. Like, just thaw it as you need it. Oh, those fatty acid chains are just mush by the time they get to the fish. That is disgusting. Them chains is mush. Them chains is mush. I, so I, gross. I, I'll leave food on top of the tank for like three hours. But I'm I'm constantly every half an hour or so pouring some in because I'm trying to feed. Um, you feed a lot. Thing with big polyps, so it's not laying mm -hmm. around on the floor. I'm, I'm intentionally trying to get it stinky so they open. But that's in my yeah. weird tank. That's not in a fish tank or especially not in a seahorse mm -hmm. tank. Um, 
What, and what, there's another thing that we can do. Yeah. The other thing that, that we can do to help prevent specifically Vibrio infections is keeping the temperature down. Um, you might hear a lot of seahorse keepers these days say 74, 74, 74 Fahrenheit is the magic number. Okay. Um, you probably should have a chiller. Um, if you have a typical, you know, the, the, the typical seahorse tank that people have today, where you have, you know, your sand and your rock and stuff, they're hard to keep clean. So if you keep the temperature 74 or below, that's going to thwart the growth of the Vibrio bacteria. Um, yeah, you can keep seahorses at, at higher temperatures, but it's more difficult because it is harder to keep it clean. But people find, and like you said earlier, people find that when they feed live foods to their seahorses, they don't have the Vibrio problem as much. There you go. Is that, is that most seahorses across the board, 74? Um, the tropical ones. If you have okay. subtropical seahorses or uh, temperate seahorses, then you need to keep it really chill. Yeah, when, when I was a zookeeper at the Houston Zoo, we had weedy, not leafy. We had weedy sea dragons. And we would go catch our own mice out of these salt ponds near Galveston. And we would leave live mice and shrimp that we would catch in that system for the Wheaties, but we had an upcharged chiller and it was super cold. I don't remember 65 or 50 or something. Yeah. That's awesome. 50 I'm so jealous. 55. Yeah. Those are, those are totally different animal, right? Yeah. Just like octopuses. People think when you say octopuses, they're all the same. And people, when you think seahorses, they're all the same and they're not. Mm -hmm. But most of the ones I think you're gonna see in the trade uh, for the hobby are gonna be tropical ones. Um, not like, which is the other one, Cuda or Red Eye? Red Eye, or are they both cold water? Um, Red Eye and Cuda are, are both tropical. What's the cold water one I'm thinking of? Abdominalis, that, it's the real big one. That's big it, belly. Abdominalis. So the ones people are gonna get, 74 is probably what you're going for. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, and that's if you're gonna great. get Abdominalis, you're gonna know that you should keep them cool. You should know. <laughs> you should know. Yeah. Does that apply? Does this apply to like pipefish and stuff? Okay. Yes. I had much, much easier time keeping pipefish in 74 or below. Huh. I even kept tropical synapids at like 68, 67. I had erectus breeding at 62. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. I was That's trying to awesome. get them to stop because I was moving and they just <laughs> popping out babies. I'm like, how low can I go? And you're still going to breed. Come on. <laughs> Hello, can you go? What, uh, what's, what's your other biggest piece of advice for people who are keeping seahorses? I usually tell people just kind of forget everything you know about reef keeping. If you're a reefer first and you want to keep seahorses, like forget all that. Start over from scratch and just read about seahorses because they're completely different. A lot of reefers, you know, they're like, oh, I have 10 years experience keeping a reef. I know how to keep, I can keep a seahorse. And I'm like, uh, maybe you should read up on it first. <laughs> and they just, what's his alkalinity need to be? They dump it in the reef and then they go, why did it die? It's like, because uh, yes. exactly. they don't live there. <laughs> right. Oi. I mean, I, I always have to, I, you know, from retail and from what I do for a living, I've always had to bump into people that are new to it. You know, people that are new to all of this, they come at with, you know, it's not poo poo on them, but they, they have all these crazy ideas and they're like, can I put a seahorse in my reef tank? You know, you get that question so much when you work at a fish store and it's like, no, I mean, I bought, and you know, and I can ask you questions like a total idiot because I am nearly a total idiot about seahorses because I've never, I've never really kept them, but you know, you see pictures of them in reefs. I don't know how these people, unless they're like cut flowers and they died shortly after the picture was taken. Um, let, so let me ask you a dumb question is what, if anything, can you keep with them? There, okay. So I have a little bit of a different experience with this than, you know, a lot of people say, uh, a lot of even experienced people will tell you like, oh, you can't keep seahorses with anything else really, uh, only the most peaceful, small, small fish. But I mean, I've kept 
adult seahorses that were already very well conditioned and eating perfectly with um, a pretty wide variety of uh, reef safe, peaceful fish like um, big anthias, uh, tile really? fish. Yeah. Because I was thinking anything that's an aggressive eater wouldn't be so, mm -hmm. that's interesting. If your seahorses are already perfectly conditioned and great eaters, you might be able to get away with it. I had uh, a variety of fairy wrasses and flasher wrasses. I love my fairy and flasher wrasses. Um, I kept them with my seahorses. Um, I once kept a small, peaceful puffer fish with my seahorses. <laughs> Don't do this stuff. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, but if you have really, 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 really well-conditioned adult, I'm talking, you know, this big, I'm not talking about the ones you find in the shops. I mean, you know, you've raised these for a while. You want to experiment with some peaceful reef safe fish, you know, go for it. Yeah. And that's coming from, I assume when you were doing this, you had multiple tanks set up that you would move you know, move animals around from and to if you needed to, right? Is that true? You had a quarantine system and then you had a seahorse system and then you had, so you would, you could move animals around. Cause I think, I think most people th you think they have one tank and then they just put stuff in it and they don't, some people don't realize. Yes, that is a really good point. You make a great point. I was able to experiment with that because I did have and always do have at least five tanks on hand where I can move things. Um, yeah. Right now I have one of those, you know, the invert systems with the cubes yeah. uh, that you find in the shops. I have one of those in my fish room. So um, if I need to, I can just throw something in a cubicle. No big deal. <laughs> You're so great. Uh, that's the same stuff I was doing with octopuses. It's, it's you, you know, you see the one picture of the fabulous animal in the environment that looks so great. And what you don't see is the 20 other tanks going on behind them in the cube system and and all the effort that goes into watching the animal and going okay i'm going to try these seahorses in with these fish and if it doesn't work i'm going to move them out because the animals are more important than my experiment with their lives so i think that's a something people often yes. skip especially with seahorses you know what you're saying kind of reminds me it, it really reminds me of discus keeping yeah because there's like an ideal way to keep a discus and it just doesn't work too well. You have to make concessions if you keep them with live plants because they'd really like to be at 84, whereas most live plants are stretching it to 82. So if you, you know, so like the perfect way, sure, to keep a discus is in this sterile ass environment that nothing else would make it in, you know, but then, you know, what the fun is that? So you find out where you can make concessions at. But, you know, the seahorses seem similar to that. Yeah. Well, be, before we move on to uh, story time, I, I just I remember at Mini Magna, we were talking with the guy, I forget his name offhand right now, from US Mycids. Um, they, they, I think they're still running this deal where you get like 300 live Mycids for 50 bucks shipped. Um, and that makes live food for, for animals, specialized animals like seahorses that need it much more affordable. Um, so, uh, and that wasn't available five years ago. You know, it was, it was, you know, 200 bucks for 500 and that's, that's all you got. Um, so there, there, if you are keeping seahorses, I think, you know, live food, life, everyone agrees live food is the way to go. Um, if you can do it and you can afford it. And I think uh, it's getting less and less expensive. So I would encourage people to look into that. And, and also, you know, make sure you buy captive bred, right? There's no, there's no reason for 98% of mm -hmm. us to get uh, a wild animal. You or Alyssa or, you know, Dan or, you know, Kelly or a whole bunch of other people, sure, if they're even available that often anymore, which are, are they not? I'm not, I'm not up on the law. Is it, it's, are we only getting captive stuff now? Do you, are you familiar? We're still able to get American seahorses that are wild or like red eye, erectus, um, they're still legal here. But I don't, I don't know why anyone would because they're so much more difficult to keep. Um, 
why not just spend the extra few bucks on the captive bread when if you get wild caught, you're going to have to buy a cabinet full of medications to deworm them and yeah. you know, treat them when they get sick, not if, when they get sick. So you may as well, or, you know, you're not going to be able to get them to eat. Just get the captive bread. They're already trained. Yeah. Or even, even you're going to replace them three times. So you've already, you've, you're already planning on spending the money, more money than it would cost to buy the captive bred ones in the first place. Well, and unfortunately too, seahorses fall into that category that brand new people into the hobbyist, you know, kind of like I alluded to earlier. It, it, when you work in a fish store, you know, during all the people that bump into you all day long, you will invariably get someone to say, you know, I want to keep seahorses. And then you're like, do you have any experience whatsoever with aquariums at all? And they're like, no. And it's like, you know, I, I just kind of would hate to see that. Yeah, I know you want to do it, but you need to know what you're doing. Do you think you could get someone to do it that way if you said something like, okay, you can have one seahorse in this all-in-one 15-gallon tank set up with what I'm going to tell you to put in it, and you're going to come in here and you're going to do a 50% water change with water you're going to buy from us every week. And you're going to feed only live food. You could, you could try that. But my <laughs> experience working in stores is that people, I, I, you'll get some people that will listen to you, but then you'll get some people that'll just go elsewhere to spend their money. Yeah. Well, uh, it's They'll go where like, they hear what they want to hear. Ah, so it's a totally <laughs> bad idea, Felicia what I'm saying, because they're not going to hear it or because it's a bad idea. I won't say that a beginner who has never had an aquarium can't keep a seahorse because a lot of times in our little circles, we found that the people who never had an aquarium before, who did a whole bunch of research on seahorses and really got into it, they were really successful um, because they didn't know anything before they didn't have any bad habits they weren't like i'm gonna put a torch coral in this tank you know like right they did their research ahead of time those are the people that ended up being really successful i and personally i think i researched for probably a year before i got seahorses and this is back when um when i was at live aquaria i was able to browse seahorse.org for yeah. eight solid hours a day <laughs> So for eight hours a day, I was reading about seahorses. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So it, it feels very, the cultures feel very much like the cephalopod culture, uh, very much the same kind of things. Uh, we say the same things, you know, um, you know, don't just get an octopus. I even, I say it the other way because uh, I say, you know, keep a, get, cut your teeth on something um, that I would say the same thing to a seahorse person, but I would still want them to do the research. That, that's the main thing. It's, it's not an animal just to buy off the cuff. It's, a, it's something you should know that you want and know that you can give it what it needs. Although we could say that about every animal. Yeah, but I've right. also, just as much as I was complaining about seahorse stuff, I've gotten that a lot with octopus too. Someone just coming into a store like, I want an octopus. Like, have you ever had an aquarium before? No, I want a piranha and an octopus and a seahorse <laughs> to play in a 10 gallon aquarium with an Oscar. And, and, like, and I want to feed it once a month. Can, can I feed it Kool-Aid? That's great. So do your research. You want some, you want a specific animal that has specific needs? Freaking learn about it. Of course you can say that about all of our animals, but it's the sub genre of our it's so interesting man i like having felicia here let's get let's get rid of ben yeah yeah <laughs> he's prettier than me ben no. is pretty especially now that he's texan no because i have better lights i've always been texan 45 years where did you get I, that hat anyway that's like a new thing for you this week it's from my dad's house oh okay you it's a stetson yeah all right hold on all right. Oh, she, she's gone. She, is it something I said? Oh, Damn. oh there you go. Yeah. Oh, now you're Woo. the odd man out, Richardo. Where's your hat? Oh, he's reaching for. Oh, look at him. I'm you a know. city Texan. You look like a reporter from 1958. 
I am over there. Fuck you. There we go. There's <laughs> now I'm now I'm the now bad guy like from a movie in black and white from the 30s. Yeah, you're in a secret society. <laughs> and this says pencil tucky, I think. That's pencil tucky. Cool. <laughs> uh yeah, we're gonna have to have you back on again because I have more things I want to ask you about seahorses, but we're running out of time and I know Ben has a story. Uh, we, we tell stories on the show because it makes us seem human, um, even though we're deep fakes. Um, <laughs> uh, ben, ben, Ben's got great stories because he does insane things all the time uh, and has been involved. And if you have a story, if he triggers a story in you, we want to hear it. Um, or if I trigger you, we want to hear you, it. Yeah, you will. What, what's your, your, your story? What, it's like burrito and porn. Yeah, it's so bad because we're like, like women in reef court keeping and then I have some like god awful story. But you know what? It's not. I think you told me the story. It's not. It's just you can say the word porn around women. I think some women really? watch it. I do. Really? You know, they're they're <laughs> in it. Do. I'm not saying I browse it, but I know there's some it says for women. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying I know all the categories on porn. Of. I'm just saying. Um. No, it was way back in the 90s when I worked at a, um, a maintenance company. And so, you know, I think there was like 10 of us running around cleaning aquariums for a company. And so, so some of the dudes got into some shenanigans where they were playing pranks on each other. And so one guy took a, a Taco Bell seven layer burrito and we all have packing blankets. The first thing you do, you put the packing blanket out on a floor. We were in like multi-million dollar houses. And so someone rolled an uncovered seven layer burrito in someone's packing blanket. And, and, uh, and this dude threw the packing blanket out and threw a seven layer burrito all over someone's like white Berber carpet. It was a really expensive carpet. Threw it all over the floor. Well, they thought it was me, but I was not engaging in such shenanigans. And so what they did, I didn't even know any of this was going on. What they did is they get, this was, so this was a 90s. So it was a VCR <laughs> porno cover, the cardboard sleeve. And so they duct taped it to the tailgate of my truck. You know, and I, I live 40 minutes away. So I didn't see any of this stuff. I don't look at the back of my tailgate. And so I'm driving home. It was, uh, if anyone from Dallas is watching this, it was 289 Preston. And so I'm oh, yeah, just yeah. driving. It's like, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I know that road. So it's just one lane this way and one lane the other way. Well, it's probably changed now. But uh, I think it's around both lanes probably one way now. Yeah, they all go the same way. All, and then all the, the other teams. lane comes up top. It's floating cars. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so it's like stop and go traffic. And I'm just sitting there in my truck with the window rolled down. And all of a sudden, this guy jumps out of his car. And he like hits the back of my truck and I'm like, what is going on? And he gets to the side and he throws something and it hits me in the face, you know, and I'm not a tiny guy myself. I'm about to get out of the car, but I'm like, I don't even understand what's going on. And so I look in my passenger seat and it's a cover to a porno. And I'm, and I, and then he starts shouting and I look at enemy like, God damn, I got my kids in the car, blah, 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 this and that. And I'm like, I don't even understand what's happening, man. And he's like, you had that thing taped to the back of your car. And I remember like at first, cause I was like gonna get out and get in a fight, but I was very confused and it was good cause that kept me in my car. But I stopped for a second. I said, why would I tape a porno to the back of my truck? And we just sat there in silence looking at each other. And he goes, why well, don't know? And I was like, why well, don't either? And so he left and that was it. Has none to do with aquariums, but has a that, lot to do with burritos and porn. That is awesome. That is, and I didn't get in a fight. Unless you got I, a, the only thing that could have made that story better is if you guys kissed. We did. <laughs> we we open mouth kissed. Perfect. We met at a Taco Bell later, and we shared a burrito together. Seven seven layer burrito has new meaning. We added an extra layer to that burrito. Uh, it is now an eight-layer burrito. I don't know what that means, and I don't want to. I don't, I don't even know what it means. I don't want to know. When, when we moved into this house, there was a guy who lived next door to us who worked at um, a porno house. And so he, he came over one day, and he said, hey, this is a weird question. 
Um, do you, do you mind if we use an exterior shot of your house for our, for a porno? Probably. And we went, oh, we don't care. And he goes, uh, it's a, it's a gay porno. And we went, we really don't care. It's fine. And he went, it's pretty hardcore gay porno. And I went, then you absolutely have to use our house. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So um, I have a copy of Back to Barstow, um, which <laughs> that porno, if, if you ever want, if you ever watch Back to Barstow, our house is the exterior. I'm going to go rent it at the local Blockbuster. I'm going to go look it up just for curiosity. <laughs> Wait, are you in it? No, just the um, house is in it. They wouldn't let, have you seen me? Why would they let me in a, in a, in a, in a porno? It's especially dude, in a stop gay it, porno. man. I would, I would bang you. But you're not gay. I'd make an exception for you. <laughs> we have now... <laughs> We have now completely veered into the beef realm. <laughs> we have veered into Barstow. Barstow. <laughs> you, you got any crazy aquarium related story? Or apparently not, because I just told a random story about my house. Uh, yeah. Any weird and, story? Um, oh, she's there thinking. was a guy who, uh, there was a real nice guy who was, who was in the porn industry. Uh, he used to visit our shop a lot and he always had uh, girls with him they were the actresses in his movies and you know he'd always have like one on each arm and he'd be you know ordering them around and stuff we thought that was kind of weird but he he was very respectful to me and I appreciated that you know this guy who was well known you know in the porn industry treated me like one of the guys and um, I was in charge of helping him with his giant mess which was a uh, it was an 800 gallon tank with a full grown I think it was a uh, Wow, what kind of eel was it? The ones, that get, the ones that get like enormous. Tessalata gets pretty big. Yeah, probably a Tessalata. I think that's what it was. His nitrates were always like 2,000 parts per million. <laughs> and he diluted really like nice five times. times. He never siphoned before <laughs> and after feeding. No, he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I did the dilution trick with the test. Yes. Yeah. We had like, we had to get like a big, big vial just for him. <laughs> I was like, I can't tell what his nitrates really are. So I got like a beaker for his, for his tests. I'd bring the beaker out, you know, I'm like, well, yeah, there's still around 2000, but he, when he told me okay. what he fed this thing, like he would go to the grocery store. It was like, it was like a mastiff sized animal, you know, yeah. the thing must have been hundreds of pounds and he was feeding it like fillets of fish every day. And he just, he couldn't keep his nitrates down. It was interesting. I think he was feeding it people. That's right. That's right. entirely possible. This was before yeah. hydrofluoric acid was widely known as the, as the movie way. way of getting rid of bodies. Yeah. It used yeah. to be eels. Eels. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. But he was he was a cool guy. Yeah, he was really cool. If he's watching, hey, how's it going? <laughs> do a bro, do a water change, man. Yeah, do a bunch. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Cool. Felicia, thank you so much for being here. This was really wonderful. You were fantastic. I was nervous that at first, but um I, I'm okay now. And it's reasonable to be like a little like, eh, like I feel weird telling that story about the guy. Like it's still, it's still like, eh, you know? Yeah. Well, that I, gross guy? Yeah. The yeah, scary guy. I, I got to thank you for doing it because if we don't hear those stories, we don't hear those stories and the culture doesn't change. And I'm sure a lot of worse things have happened to women in this industry and whatever, but I, it, it also upset me because, and you can even say this, that shouldn't have happened to me at work. I was at work, you know, which should have been a safe place. Like people are like, well, what were you wearing? And like, what did nope. you do to bring this on? And it's like, nope. I was at work, a customer service person who, you know, it was my job to be friendly, but I always was polite, you know, politely like, no, thank you. You know, and I still, you know, had hands put on me. It's crazy. I, I get you see a pretty girl and you, you know, bide for your time and you're like, hey, would you ever be interested in going out? And you say no. I mean, I don't understand how anyone was like, well, she said no, but she really meant ask her a hundred more times and try to drag her into the alley. Like, that's just insane. 
Yeah. I, I wish more of this shit would happen around me. You should carry like real, like a raw pepper. And when someone does that, just jam it in their eyes. <laughs> okay. The, the, the like raw a, pepper. Like a, like a red bell pepper? No, Those not a pepper. bell pepper. Like I'm in Texas, so I have, I naturally, pepper. I have jalapenos in my pocket. Is that, I didn't realize that was a Texas thing. You, that, yep. that when you arrive in Texas, actually that's true. When I flew into Brownsville, we got uh -huh. out and they came up and they put jalapenos in my pockets. They yeah, they give you, they that. give you a gun. They give you a gun and yeah, they give have you a, gun. Like a hot pepper, a gun and a hot pepper. Welcome to Texas. Here's your gun and your hot pepper. That's the state motto. Um, yeah. All right, Felicia, we want to let you go. Be respectful of your time. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon and uh, we'll send you the links when this comes up. Thanks, Felicia. Thanks for having me. I'll come back again. That was fun. Absolutely going to have you again. You even put on a hat. Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> <laughs>